Welcome back to Brad Owen Clips. Today we're going to address a very, very important topic if you want to become a profitable poker player. So we're going to go through all the positions, the terminology that I use for that, and then we're also going to go through the raise first in charts associated with those positions. So a lot of the time you hear me say something like, under the gun raises to 15 or the cutoff calls. I'm going to be going through that terminology and much, much more. Uh, with the raise first in stuff, we're going to be using upswings preflop charts. You can just Google upswing preflop charts and you'll have access to this for free. I'll also provide a link in the description box and I'll pin it in the comments section. Definitely check this stuff out. This stuff will provide a framework for being a winning poker player. If you don't know what hands you're playing preflop, you don't know what hands you're gonna to get to the turn and river with on certain board runouts, you don't know what hands you're gonna be betting for value in those spots, or what hands you're gonna be bluffing with. So you absolutely need to get this stuff down. This is a pretty basic set of preflop charts and I mentioned it'll be the raise first in charts. There are multiple charts. It gets more and more complicated. This is pretty simple for 100 big blinds. What it means by raise first in is if it's folded to you, and let's say we're playing one, two, we're gonna wanna raise, we're never gonna wanna limp in and call for $2. We're always gonna wanna make it $6 or maybe $8, with the exception of sometimes if we're in the small blind and it folds to us. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. What we're looking at here is a nine-handed poker game. Let's say for this example, we're playing $1, $2, no limit Texas Hold'em. That means the small blind is gonna put out a dollar and the big blind is gonna put out $2. This is before the cards are even dealt. They have to get the betting started somehow. Preflop, the first position player is called under the gun. This person is highlighted in red here. They have to play a narrow range because they have to act before everybody else does. Under the gun's neighbor is under the gun plus one. He's gonna be second to act pre-flop. Then we have under the gun plus two. Then we have the low jack. And this position is also the middle position player. To the low jack's left, you have the high jack. Then you have the cutoff. Then you have the button, who is the last person to act post-flop. This is a very powerful position. Because you have a lot more information, you get to see what all the other players are doing before you act post-flop. You can play a much wider range. Now let's go ahead and look at the associated ranges with each one of these positions. This is the raise first in chart for under the gun. Raise first in just means if no one has acted before you, there's no one that's in the pot other than the blinds, this is what we're gonna get involved with. And we're always gonna be raising, and we're gonna be raising typically 2.5 times the size of the big blind up to four times the size of the big blind. If we're under the gun, there's no one that acts before us. Everybody acts after us pre-flop, which puts us in a tough position. We have to play a super, super narrow range. We're gonna be folding pocket deuces, threes, fours, fives, and sixes. We only start getting involved with pocket pairs when we pick up sevens or better. The only bluff hand that we're really gonna have is ace five suited, and then it's mostly suited Broadway cards. And then we have ace king offsuit in our range, ace queen offsuit, jack nine suited, 10 nine suited, and nine eight suited. So. Again, this is just a baseline for what you wanna do when you're first to act. It's not necessarily absolute. For instance, in some games, I might open all my pocket pairs. If I think that someone is gonna pay me off big time if I make a set, I'm absolutely gonna do that. Next, we have under the gun plus ones range. And you can see it's exactly the same as under the guns range. You still have everybody left to act behind you pre-flop and then post-flop. You're out of position against everybody except for the small blind, big blind, and in this example, under the gun has already folded. So playing out of position is just super, super tough. You can't really control pots and you're at a big disadvantage since you don't have as much information to work with as people who are acting behind you. Next, we get to under the gun plus two and you see things start to open up a little bit. We're playing ace four suited, ace eight suited, the big suited nines now, we're playing ace nine suited, king nine suited and queen nine suited. We're also opening with ace-jack offsuit, so we get to play a few more hands and it starts getting a little bit more fun as we move on into later positions. Here we have the low jack or middle positions range and we're playing all the suited aces now. We're playing 10-8 suited. We're playing a few more pocket pairs with pocket fives and pocket sixes. We also are throwing in 8-7 suited and 7-6 suited into the mix and king-queen offsuit. So as you see, 
we get wider and wider ranges as we are in later and later positions and we're raising first in with these. That's if it's folded to us, we're getting in the mix with these hands. This is the hijacks range. You can see that we've got nine seven suited. We've got pocket fours. We've got some offsuit Broadway cards now that we're gonna be playing like ace jack offsuit, ace 10 offsuit, king jack offsuit, and queen jack offsuit. So if under the gun, under the gun plus one, under the gun plus two, and the low jack or middle position player fold, these are the hands that we're raising with. If we're playing one, two, let's say we raise it to $6, the big blind calls, all of a sudden there are a lot more boards that the hijacks range is gonna connect with than let's say the under the gun pre-flop raiser uh, might connect with. So let's say for instance, the flop comes 10, eight, six, the big blind has to be worried that we have 9-7 suited, whereas if we raise them onto the gun, that's a hand that we never would have had. So uh, this is just kind of an example of how you might think about this stuff when you're in game. Here's the cutoffs range, and it's gonna open up quite a bit. You only have three players to act behind you pre-flop. That's gonna be the button, the small blind, and the big blind. The small blind and big blind are always gonna act before you post flop, so you can really widen up your range. We're gonna be playing all the big suited eights now. King eight suited, queen eight suited, jack eight suited. We're playing all the pocket pairs and we're playing all the offsuit Broadway cards like king 10 offsuit, queen 10 offsuit, and jack 10 offsuit. Things start really getting interesting with this range, uh, especially in you know a cutoff or, well, you'll see with uh, the button as well that these button versus big blind hands, there are a lot of ways that the button can connect with all types of boards. Let's get into that now. Here's a look at the button's pre-flop opening range. By the way, pre-flop opening range and raise first in range is the same thing. So you see that we're gonna be playing all the suited kings pretty much, most of the suited queens, jack six suited, 10 six suited, nine six suited, the reason that we're playing so many hands is because we're gonna be in position post flop no matter what against the small blind and the big blind if they decide to call. If they don't call, we take down the blinds and that's a win by itself. There's gonna be a lot of flops that we connect with and it really puts the small blind in a, a tough spot. So a lot of the time, we won't get into it in this video, but a lot of the time if we raise first in on the button, the small blind is gonna play a three bet or fold strategy. They won't be calling our pre-flop pre raise very often. Back to this chart, we're gonna be playing all the offsuit aces now. We're gonna be playing ace eight offsuit, ace five offsuit, and we're raising first in. We're gonna be playing the offsuit nines as well. King nine, queen nine, jack nine, and 10 nine offsuit, and we're playing Basically all the suited connectors, if the small blind and big blind are weak players, you have a big edge on them. You could potentially raise with any two suited cards. They're not gonna play that poorly against you know the small blind or big blind's calling range. And again, if they fold, we are gonna take down the blinds, which is a pretty good result for us. Now we get to the small blind. If it folds all the way around to you, and you're the small blind, you're gonna be raising with a huge variety of hands. You're gonna be raising with a ton of suited cards and it looks pretty similar to the buttons range actually. So you can kind of keep that in mind. We're also gonna be raising with hands like king eight, queen eight, jack eight, 10 eight, and nine eight offsuit. Those are pretty much the only additional ones that are on the offsuit side. And then a few more hands like six three suited, seven four suited. All you have to do is get through one player and then you take down Big blind, if you're playing in a raked game, you may wanna chop, uh, particularly if you're in Southern California because these casinos are gonna take a lot of money pre-flop if you just see a flop and that's brutal. You can just save yourself some money right away by agreeing to chop with the big blind. That means neither of you play your hands and you take your money back. So that might be something that you'd wanna do in a raked game. If you're playing a time game, then there's not really much sense in chopping. At least that's my philosophy. There's a very introductory video on terminology that I use and different positions and ranges. There are a variety of other ranges that you're going to wanna look at. So you might need to look at, you know, if under the gun raises pre-flop, what is the hijacks calling range look like? What does this three bet range look like? If he does three bet, what does under the gun's four bet range look like? There are various ranges like that that you do have to pay for on different sites. I have links down below in the description box to 
Upswings, poker site, where you can get kind of more advanced ranges. I'm actually going to be putting out a course with Nick Petrangelo later. Nick Petrangelo came up with some very complex and very comprehensive preflop charts. The more you memorize these, the more, you know, you're going to be a much better player. You're going to have your fundamentals down. You're going to know exactly what hands you have in your range, and you're going to know and, and be, able to, be able to better balance what hands you want to be betting for value or what hands you want to be bluffing with. You're going to understand how many strong hands your opponents will have on certain boards and various things like that. It's super, super important stuff. The more you get it down, the more time you put in studying, the better player you'll be, the more profitable you'll be, and probably the more, the more fun you'll have. So again, I have a link down below in the description box to these free raise first in charts. This is very basic stuff. As you get more advanced and as you are playing deeper games, you might have a different set of ranges for 200 big blinds, for instance, or you might have a mixed strategy where you might want to raise, you know, a certain hand like queen jack offsuit a certain percentage of the time, depending on what position you're in. So keep that stuff in mind. And you're going to also want to tailor it based on your competition. If you're getting three bet a lot, you might want to take out some of the weaker hands in these raised first in ranges. So there's all kinds of stuff like that that you do want to have on your mind. But I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope it makes things more clear for the main channel. And uh, yeah, good luck at the tables, guys. I'll see you next time.